for a few moments here. We'll take a break from uh, showing what's going on on board the space station right now to talk about the possibility of uh, being an astronaut living and working on board the space station. So to do that, we have astronaut Jack Fisher, who's one of the astronauts who was selected in the class of 2009 just recently and uh, is a fully certified astronaut and uh, is supporting missions from here in mission control and uh, could be uh, flying to the space station. And uh, we're going to talk about what it takes to uh, get into the astronaut program because right now NASA is going through the process of uh, selecting astronauts. The application is open until next Friday, January 27th at uh, www.nasa.gov slash fly NASA. So, uh, Jack, thank you for joining us. Thank you for uh, having me. We'd like to talk about your background and see how you got to come here to NASA. You bet. Uh, just a, a quick summary. I, I uh, grew up in Colorado like you. <laughs> Go Broncos, or yeah. maybe not. Not, <laughs> not this year. <laughs> and uh, uh, from there, I went to the Air Force Academy and uh, on to MIT to get my graduate degree. Uh, and then I went into flying in the Air Force and uh, flew F-15E Strike Eagles at, uh, in North Carolina and Mountain Home, Idaho and then went to Edwards Air Force Base Test Pilot School. Uh, went through there and then uh, I moved around all over the Air Force but tested uh, F-15s and F-22s and eventually I was picked up when I was in DC for a year for a uh, uh, internship and came down here. So it's been a wild ride but worked out pretty good mm -hmm. in the end. Yeah, yeah, that you're here. Um, so you're still in the Air Force. You're Absolutely. a lieutenant colonel, correct? Yes. And how does that work that you're active in the Air Force, but also an astronaut? Well, you know, it's kind of like uh, NASA rents you from the Air Force. So uh, we're still we're still required to do all of uh, the requirements as far as schooling and uh, professional military education while we're here. But we're also, uh, you know, active assets at, at NASA, and we. We uh, do our jobs here at NASA, so we're just basically being rented. <laughs> well, we're glad to have you. Absolutely, I'm um, glad to be here. I bet. Uh, and how does the process to apply work for a military astronaut? So it's it's similar to uh, civilians, but there's just a few more hoops that you have to go through. You, you start off, everyone has to fill out their USA Jobs application, so make sure you do that before next week. Um, and then in the Air Force, you fill out another application that will start at your base and then go up to the MAGCOM, uh, Major Command, they call them AFPC, which is our personnel command. At least this is the Air Force way, but all the services are the same. And then from there, they will screen you, uh, look at your medical and, and your background and see if you're a, a eligible candidate and then forward those names to NASA. And for the most part, when they forward those names, that's kind of like giving a key to NASA to say, all right, you can unlock their USA Jobs application now. So at that point, now they can look at your application and consider you in the larger pool of several thousand people to uh, narrow you down to uh, who they interview and who they eventually pick. Okay, so you still apply at uh, the Absolutely. government website, um, which you can reach by going to the www.nasa.gov slash fly NASA. Um, and then the process through the military takes a little bit longer, but then eventually you sync back up with the civilian Absolutely. group that's going through the interviews. You start a little earlier, but you sync up in the end. So. Okay, so you came down for the interviews and Absolutely. the Absolutely, so the after, after they, uh, they narrow it down to about 400 folks uh, where they'll send off requests to get... Uh, your references to actually fill out a reference and send it in. And from there, they'll narrow it down again to around 100 folks. And those people will come down in, in several groups of around 20. Um, and you'll go through your first round of interviews, um, do some tests. It's about three or four days that, that round. And, and based on how you interact with everyone, and, and they do a few teamwork exercises and all sorts of tests, but mainly a, a big interview where you're sitting at this this T-shaped table, and you're you're in the corner of the table. So you have people sitting back behind you and off to the side and all over. And hmm. it's I think they just want to make you uncomfortable and see how you'll react. You kind of have to back up and look at these folks and back up and look at those folks. It's it's uh, an interesting experience to say the least. 
And then based on that, they'll scale you down again to around 40 people and then bring you down to NASA again to go through some medical tests and uh, much, much more extensive testing as well as interviews, mm -hmm. uh, both uh, psychological as well as the uh, tea table of terror. <laughs> um, and so the, the process seems pretty competitive. We've already had more than 2,800 applications for this group and typically get about 2,500 to 3,000. So, but people do make it. Do you have suggestions for, for people that want to apply out there? Well, you know, a lot of how they select, I have no idea, and I, I just feel lucky that I was able to make it. Um, and I think luck has a lot to do with it, your timing and everything else. So the most important thing that you can do is to apply. I had a, an ops officer. He's kind of the guy who runs the squadron in a uh, the flying operations in a in a fighter squadron, and he once told me, "If you want to fly, you got to stand by the ops desk and be ready to fly. If if you're not there and you're not ready, if you don't apply, if you don't take that step, you'll never get picked. So, um, the best the best advice you can have for anyone is to put your name in the hat, do your your best effort to to put what you are and how you how you what you are as a person onto paper." Mm -hmm. which is a good self-examination exercise regardless what happens. And then uh, from there, we'll see what happens. So now that you've gone through that whole process and how fun is it to be here? Let's tell everybody about what it's like it's, to be an astronaut so far. It's uh, fantastic. We've, we've done a lot of things. It was, it was an adjustment for me uh, going from an Air Force culture to, to NASA, but uh, in the end... Uh, gotten a lot of experiences that you could never get anywhere else. We've gone all over the world. Um, I spent six weeks in Russia. I've spent several weeks in Japan. Uh, we've gone to Germany, uh, all over the world doing all sorts of things. Um, EVA is spacewalk training, uh, where we do at the uh, Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory. And, and for a guy who grew up on a construction site, and with my family was into construction, uh, being able to build stuff underwater is just a dream come true. So absolutely love it over there. And then the uh, chance we're sitting in the uh, mission control room, another favorite part of my job is, is being a Capcom or capsule communicator. It's a holdover name from, from the, the early space program days. But basically, we get to uh, sit in this group, this room of just amazing people and and be able to communicate with the crew on a daily basis in fact that's why i'm wearing a tie right now is because i i just got off uh, a shift this morning and uh, was able to to work with the crew and you know this uh, a good example of of why it's so great is is yesterday i was sitting capcom or i guess last night the night before whatever it's it's late in my world right, right now <laughs> and uh uh, there was a problem with the exercise device on, on the space station. It's called the Advanced Resistive Exercise, oh, device. exercise <laughs> device. There you go, A-RED. Anyway, A-RED wasn't working, and mm -hmm. the crew gets very upset because they really love A-RED. It, it, it's, a, it's a great uh, escape for them to, to be able to work out, and it was broken. And they tried to fix it once, and then Dan Burbank, our commander on, space, on the uh, station right now, you know, called down and said, this is why it's not working. This part is broken. And it was almost like Apollo 13, you know, where they just throw a bunch of stuff on the table and say, make this, you know, square peg fit in this round hole. And, and uh, you know, the group through the night worked. And, and I came back in at, you know, about 3 o'clock this morning. And there's already a procedure all made up with pictures of exactly how we're going to fix this thing. And we send it up. And, you know, about an hour later, Dan goes through it and says, hey, there's a few pieces that aren't going to work. There's some things that are missing. And he grabs a piece of string and he grabs some Velcro. And, you know, together the whole team was able to fix this thing. And, and it's uh, every day is like that in this job. So it, it's a, a very exciting part of what I do just to be able to interact and see. You know, I consider this front room of, of the MCC to be the major leagues. Um, everybody in here is top of their game they're just amazing people so to be able to work with them and and work with the crew on a daily basis is a really great part of the job and that will come in handy i guess if you ever are joining a crew on board the space station oh, you'll have so, the experience yeah. of knowing what the team does down here absolutely um it's 
you know, I have a really fun time just watching the crew on orbit. One of the things I love watching, and, I, and I've only been doing it a few months, but I've at least seen enough to, uh, I, I like watching how they move around. And uh, when they start up there and they're a brand new crew, they're kind of tentative and they're kind of moving slowly. And, and, then, uh, and then by the end, they're just graceful like swans, you know, floating through and pushing off and going half the distance. Uh, Don Pettit, who's up there right now, I, I love watching him because it seems every time I see him moving through the space station, he goes in a different way. Uh, the, last night he was like walking, almost like he was on the moon, and, and uh, today <laughs> he was pushing and then would put himself into a little cannonball and go through about <laughs> two modules and reach out his arm and go. It's just it, it's silly things, but it's, it's fascinating to, to see and to watch. And so I, I, I hope I'm picking up enough that, that I'll be able to apply that someday mm -hmm. on the station. That's good experience here. And then you mentioned your training all over the world. That's uh, going to all of our different partners for the Absolutely. space station program. And um, so what else uh, do you do now that you're sort of an operational astronaut for the office? So I, I kind of work, we have uh, branches in the astronaut office and I kind of have little pieces and in, in all sorts of branches. Um, I work in the Soyuz branch, and uh, what we try to do is compile all of the, the study guides and the information about Soyuz so that as people go to Star City to uh, go through their training for the Soyuz, they can, you know, have a leg up and be able to prepare themselves and have a, a resource. Uh, I'm also working here in the Capcom branch. Uh, I'm a crew support astronaut for an upcoming, actually the next... Uh, two increments, increment 31 and 32, uh, Sonny Williams, Joe Akaba, and, and Akihido Hashida. And it, it, it's, it's great to be able to go through the flow and, and watch everything that they're doing. And, and uh, I've also been assigned to a, an EVA, the spacewalk, um, that Aki and, and Sonny are supposed to be doing. And being able to go to the MBL, the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory, our big old pool all the time and, and watch them and, and just go through the whole process of uh, this elaborate dance that is a spacewalk has been a lot of fun. So I'm just kind of spread all over the place. That's good. That's good to get the experience. And then hopefully um, you'll support the space station as a, a crew member. I hope so. And then there's also the possibility of your class or the next class that's being hired of going on our, our new vehicles. What what oh, hopes absolutely. do you have for that? And, I, you know, that's probably one of the most exciting things right now is, is we have this new SLS um, heavy launch system that we're uh, pursuing as well as the multipurpose crew vehicle or Orion this capsule that, you know, in the past the, sh the shuttle is was built for low Earth orbit, whereas we're building this vehicle to come back at higher reentry angles uh, from places like the Moon and asteroids and Mars and and beyond. So it's a very exciting time to uh, be here and even imagine the possibility of of taking that next evolutionary step for mankind. So I. Uh, I'm ec ecstatic, and I, I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to apply and at, at least have the, the chance to help with that. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned how you help with it. I mean, even in, while the space station is going and we're supporting that, we're also, and your office is involved in helping design the future vehicles, Absolutely. Right? We have an entire branch called the Exploration Branch, which is uh, right now working not only with our commercial uh, partners to... to uh, extend uh, commercial access to space, but also designing and, and helping to build that that space launch system and the heavy lift and Orion and just really push us to the next level. They even have a uh, proposal right now of making a uh, orbiting facility in one of the uh, Earth moon, it's a Lagrange point, it's kind of a gravity point that between two body systems that you don't really have to expend any energy to stay there it's kind of like no gravity so you can put a big old station up there and you don't have to station keep and if we had that big laboratory kind of like the space station only on the other side of the moon we'd be able to launch from there 
down to the moon for excursions to control all sorts of vehicles on the moon, it, it would be a great next step for us to perfect our systems and our processes before we go further and go to places like Mars and beyond. Mm -hmm. Well, um, thank you for coming and speaking with us. And thanks know, for If you have any me. more uh, final advice for people that need to apply before next Friday. <laughs> well, just apply and, and would say that, you know, I've uh, been going around trying to encourage folks to apply and, and one thing that I, I wouldn't do is you, you shouldn't live your life um, gunning for one thing at NASA. It's too much based on luck. I'm a good example of that. You should uh, follow your heart. And if you're passionate about what you do and, and you, you truly bring who you are to everything that you put your name on, then you'll, you'll stand out and eventually good things will happen. Okay, well, thank you. And again, uh, the application and more background about the process and the qualifications and blogs from other astronauts in, in Jack Fisher's position are all online at www.nasa.gov slash fly NASA. Thank you. Thanks.